Hey everybody, this is Timothy Luke. I'm creating a Genome Sequencer Enhanced 101 video. I've had a couple of people turn around and ask, okay, well, I don't get this, I don't understand it. What is Genome Sequencer Enhanced? Why should I care about it? Why Why does it matter? Um, it looks shiny, and but what, what do I do with it? How does it work? All right. So Gnome Sequence Editor is basically designed to uh, is basically designed around limitations that exist in the macro interface inside of WoW. So I'm going to start with a brief intro to macros. Then I'm going to look at some of the shortcomings as we go. Then I'm going to show you what Gnome Sequencer does and how it works. So in some of the other videos that are sitting and uploaded into YouTube here, you've got one on the Sequence Editor. You've got one on how to save macros and all that other stuff. This isn't going to cover that. This is just going to literally cover, I've got Gnome Sequencer out of the box. What does it do for me? Why does it matter? Why do I care? So, starting with Macros 101. A macro is literally designed so that you can create a couple of actions um, and attach those couple of actions to a button click. And it's so that you could turn around and do, like, I want to do a combat action, and I want to do this, and I want to do that. And those other things aren't necessarily part of the global cooldown, but they're, they're things that are useful. So, for example, this one here I've got is called Mark and Taunt. Now, I used to tank in Ulduar, and um, I, I know the game has changed a lot since then. Um, I still do tank, but I generally try to leave that to people that want to be specialist tanks, as opposed to me. But... I had this macro, and what it did was it would turn around and go, if an ad got loose, I would use this macro in game, and it would do two things. It would cast Hand of Reckoning. Now, Hand of Reckoning is the Paladin Taunt ability, so it taunts the target to attack you and increases threat you generate against the target for three seconds. But the other thing that would do is it would turn around and put the blue square target marker, marker on that. So what my raid used to understand was that if something got loose and a blue square popped up on it, I had it under control, don't worry about it. And this one cl button click did those two actions for me. So to demonstrate, I'm going to use this target dummy that's standing here. Um, now I've got my macro down here. Actually, I'll, re I'll remove that and put it back so you can see what I've done. So I've gone clunk, I've got my macro. I hit it once. All right, I've got the Torn ability and the blue square has been attached to this particular target marker. That's what a macro does. Now, you can get a little bit more serious. So here's one that's called Ret Rotation, and it has what they call a cast sequence, which is basically cast this spill, Crusader Strike, then Crusader Strike, then Judgment, then Templar's Verdict, and when that's finished, go back to the top. But this particular sequence requires one two, three, four key presses, right? And so the way it works as we walk up to our resident target dummy is I've got it down here as ret2, and the tooltip says Crusader Strike. That's what this line show tooltip means. But sitting here with ret2, so my first hit, I get a Crusader Strike. I then get another Crusader Strike. I then get a Judgment, and then it goes into No Man's Land. So what it's waiting for is it won't progress to Templar's Verdict because Templar's Verdict needs three Holy Power and I've only got two. So if I do another one of these, then the button activates and I can do my Templar's Verdict. So, yeah, so this is one of the problems. If your rotation's wrong and your spell's wrong and it's waiting for an event to happen, I'll just get out of combat, um, it would wait till whatever condition was available to do that. Now the benefit of this thing is I didn't have to change buttons. So if I had this down here, I could go three, 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 do something else, three, 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 do something else, three, 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 eight. And that that might work for your playstyle, right? Um, one of the differences that Gnome Sequencer Enhanced has is that it would get to that dead spot and it would skip that dead spot and continue on to whatever the next action is. But we'll talk about that later. So the first problem we've got is that macros in this get stuck. The second problem we've got is that there's a limit of 255 characters, right? So if your macro gets big, and by big I mean more than 255 characters in length, so like my one, two, three, yeah, one, two, three, four actions has taken up almost half of the available space, right? So you want to put a whole rotation in and you've got it timed right or whatever else, this will just get stuck. 
or it'll stop or you won't have enough characters or you won't have enough space and yes there are ways of expanding this out to a thousand characters for longer macros but then those thousand character macros only exist on your computer on that particular spot you go log into another computer and it has no idea what that macro contains or what it does it's going mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so you retype it on that computer you come back to your first computer it wipes it so this these two core things are what GNOME Sequencer Enhanced is designed to deal with. So first thing, it will bypass things that are stuck. And the second thing is it doesn't get stuck on the 255 character limit. But the other rules that apply to macros still apply to GNOME Sequencer. Right? So one of the things you can't do in one of these macros is you can't do an if then else. So you can't turn around and go, I mean, I know the executes have been taken away from a lot of specs, like Paladins used to have um, Hammer, Wrath, Execute, Kill Shot, whatever. Yeah, um, all of the, a lot of those have been taken away, but you used to have these abilities that when the target got to 30% health, you had this super DPS ability that you could use, and it would only come into effect when the target hit 30% health. So you couldn't turn around and go, if target greater than 30% do this cast sequence but then when they're under 30% else add in um, kill shot kill shot kill shot kill shot kill shot or execute 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 it doesn't work like that you can't make those kind of decisions so if there's an if then else condition you as the player needs to make that decision that's the way blizzards designed the game and that's how they wanted to approach they have no problem with things like cast sequences and what I'm about to show you with Gnome Sequencer. This stuff's all legitimate within the rule stuff, but when it comes to an if-then-else condition, the player has to make the decision, not the mod. Right, so, so this is not mods playing the game for you. This is literally a case of you're going to have to use some intelligence and you're going to have to know some stuff about your class for this to get the most out of it. Um, but it will overcome some of those limitations. All right. So now that I've done that, what's GNOME Sequencer? So GNOME Sequencer, I'm writing a command called GSSE, and I'm going to bring up the editor. So GNOME Sequencer is slightly different to that macro interface. So if I take, um, I'll bring that macro back up again now that I got rid of it. So this is our ret rotation. We had Crusader Strike, Crusader Strike, Judgment, Templar's Verdict, right? Well, what this looks like in GNOME Sequencer is it has three sections right so it has some other stuff at the top and i'll get to that later on but it has a pre macro so this is a space for things that before you execute a command what are the things that are off the global cooldown that i want to do and it might be things like putting up a raid mark it might be targeting the enemy as i've got here it might be i want to pop a trinket um but as things that they're not global cooldown actions um but they go into, oh, I want to do that at the same time. So they can go into two places, a pre-macro or a post-macro. Obviously, the pre-macro ones happen as you press down. The post-macro ones happen as you let go of the key after the event. Right? But then the way this works is this has got a sec fu step function of sequential, and it'll basically start through the rotation like this. It'll go Judgment, Crusader Strike, Blade of Justice, Consecration, Crusade, Wake of Ashes, Templar's Verdict, and then it'll loop back to the top again. So it'll go... And it'll do that every time I press the 2 key. Right, so um, I'll delete this, and I'll show you how... I'll, I'm, just, I'm clearing up some of this stuff, and I'll show you how this works. So if I enter the GS command, what it'll tell me is these are all of the, these are all of the sequences that are available to my class and my spec. So like this getup one is a class-wide class macro for paladin, paladin reses. Great. This one, live test, is a paladin retribution one. This one's a paladin retribution one. Um, there's a bit of help text. This is free text given by the, the author. Um, and you've got, who's the author? Contributed by Drake. Um, and you know, generally people put in things like talents. You know, in this case, it's 3311112. Um, and if I bring up my talent window, which is there, so I've got 3311112. Um, different authors will tell you different information. 
obviously if it's a class weight macro, um, the talents could be interesting because Prot and Rhett are going to have different talents, so, stuff like that. Um, but there may be other things like it's got your talent choices are, are, are completely independent to you, but you must take um, the tier 3 talent repentance and you must take the uh, tier 6 uh, talent divine intervention. Everything else is free reign. So this will be a note from the author about how this sequence works. But what it will do is, if I do this GS again, it'll turn around and on your character specific tab, it'll create the icons for this particular sequence, right? So we've got this one, this ret one. Um, if I click on the right button, DB ret, I'll put that in. And the way this works, if I walk back over to our target dummy, right? So it's telling me my first spell is judgment. Great, bang. My next spell is Crusader Strike. Yep, that worked. My next one's Blade of Justice. That worked. My next one's Consecration. That worked. So my next one's Crusade. Yep, that worked. My next one's Grayed Out because it's Wake of Ashes. Now, Wake of Ashes is an artifact ability that I don't have yet. But if I press the button, it just skips it and it'll go on to Templar's Verdict. Well, Templar's Verdict was, act, was up and so it'll go through. My next one is I'm back to Crusader Strike again. So... As I cycle through these, you can see down the bottom in the tooltip on the right-hand side how they're, they're changing, and it's going through what's a... Da, 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 da. So it looks like it's making some decisions for me, but what it's really doing is it's skipping the dead abilities. Right? So using this kind of a tool, you can actually start creating some rather smart sequences, but... They are a case of they're not if then else, they're not choices, they're just literally going, well, I'm setting this up. So read into that what you wish. I'm not telling you anything, I'm not hinting anything, I'm just basically going, here's something to pay attention to, right? So that's that's how Gnome Sequencer works. It's just literally a case of it's creating a better version of this compared to that, Right? It's easy to read, it's easy to understand. There's a website called Wow Lazy Macros that turns around and goes through what all of these... Yep, it has hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of macros con contributed by people. When you download Gnome Sequencer Enhanced, it comes with three parts. So if I bring up the add-ons window... right? So the first one it comes with is a thing called Gnome Sequencer Enhanced Core. This is the bit that makes stuff work. Right? So provided you have this and some macros, this will work. So I could turn off, I can turn this off, I can turn this off, I can turn this off. And if I have those two, things will work. Or if I didn't have this and I had that, this will work. All right? Um, I'll turn all this other stuff back on. So this is the first thing that comes out. The second thing is this sequence editor. And you saw me play around with the sequence editor for a minute. The sequence editor... It's available from the GSSE command, and it brings up, here's a list of all the sequences that you know about. They're not tied to your spec, and I'll probably add some filtering searching stuff over here in a later version. But it's basically, these are all the sequences that I know about, and this is the text representation of what they are. So I can look at it and go, hmm, yep, great, I'm pretty happy with that. Actually, no, what I want to do is I want to edit that, and I want to change it. So I can edit it, I can move uh, Divine Storm up. Uh, actually, I want Crusader after Divine Storm for, for reasons. Um, none of these choices are actually the brightest ideas or whatever else, but that's a different conversation for a different day. Um, but I can move this stuff around. I can turn around and go, so use Combat 13, use Combat 14. Basically says, try and use my trinket slots if I'm in combat. Um, and there's Blizzard has a whole lot of documentation on each of these lines. These are the same. So this line here is exactly the same as the line that you would put into. It's exactly the same as the line you would put into here. So like cast hand of reckoning, right? Without the semicolon at the end. But it's literally a case of that's the that's the thing. Cast wake of ashes. Now each of these are tied to the language of the client. Um, I am working on a translation ability because there's people that... Because no, not everybody plays in English. But 
that's coming and it's going to take some time. But each of these these lines, these commands, these bits, they need to be in the language of your client. So if you're running French, um, you need to have the French version of consecration. You need to have the French words for bladed justice. You need to have the French words for crusader strike. And the easy way to do that is if you open up your spell book, um, you can just literally go, oops, case, cast, uh, Templar's Verdict, drag and drop, and it'll throw it in. Right. Um, you could go just a car's vengeance because I want that. Um, and that's that. And then when you go close, it'll basically create a text representation of this thing. All right. And I'll come back to this part in a minute. So if I go back to that add-ons list, uh, move that over the side. So the third thing that this comes with, this comes with a, an add-on called Drake's Bundled Macros. And so in this list, all these ones that start with DB, they're all from that Drake's Bundled Macros. It's a macro pack that comes, so you get the three things with... So out of the box, you get these three things with Gnome Sequencer Enhanced. You get the sequence editor, so you can edit and create your own macros. You get the core that basically runs macros for you. And you get these bundled ones, which is a list of, I think, last count, it's about 52 different macros for different specs. Um, some some, mac some classes are better represented than others. This is a work in progress. So, But what you'll find is that things like, say, um, Windwalker, there's... there's DBWW and there's DB Win Single and they have different talent sets because different people play Windwalkers a different way and people are trying to figure out the best way to get stuff out of them. So like there's two Holy Priest DPSs, you know, Holy Deeps and Holy Priesty. They're different ways of trying to do Holy Damage as a Priest um, with different orders and bits, different talents. Um, and so there's stuff there to try and, as a starting point, get your playstyle under control, figure out how these go. Um, but you can take these, put them into the sequence editor, you can adjust them, you can create them. But when you've put something into the sequence editor, it'll come back with a sequence called life test. Right. So if I open my macro window again, and on my general page as opposed to my character ones, um, I will find life test. There it is there, I can bring it down. Pressing this button will now turn around and run this sequence. It'll do those actions, it'll do those tasks. That's great, but as soon as I log out, this is deleted. All right, so it's not kept anywhere, it's just local in memory till you log out. Now the reason for that is that all of these things that are in DB stuff, these are all stored in files in your add-ons folder. There's no way to directly edit them. You need a text editor to change them, um, and we'll do that in a sec. But it's just a case of this is there's no way I can overwrite that stuff and I didn't want someone to come in change like the red AOE one change it up okay test it come back the next day and go hang on my red AOE one has changed back to what it was it's the same problem it used it's, it's doing exactly what it was the first time I've lost all my stuff um, so this is where this extra add-on comes into play Right, so if I go back to my add-ons list, I've got this one called My Macros. Right, you can get this. It's linked. It's there's a link to it on the GNOME Sequencer Enhanced page on Curse and on Wow Interface. This is a blank shell. So literally, it doesn't have any macros in it. It's just a blank shell that if you put your stuff in there, um, you put the stuff that you're editing in Life Test. You put that stuff in there. It's not going to get overridden when GNOME Sequencer is updated. So we're currently at 1.0.4. If I update to 1.0.5 and I change some macros, um, your stuff's not going to get wiped out and overridden. So GNOME Sequencer it has this plug-in option, so you can plug in other add-ons, add-on packs that have different bundles of stuff. So I've got another one here called WM High Performance Macros. So in my drop-down list, I've got a bunch that's called HP as opposed to DB. The DB ones are in Drake's bundle macros, the HP ones are in the high performance macro one. But I've got these bits that... So I've got these other things in other places and stuff. So, coming back to it, how do I save this macro that we've created? All right, so I go... Control... Bleh. So I have to use the mouse and select it all. I have to go Control C to copy it onto the clipboard. Um, I think on a Mac that's um, Apple C or whatever your normal 
copy command is. Um, and then you need to turn around and go to a text editor. So here's one I prepared earlier. We'll leave that for a second. The first thing I want to point out is don't use Notepad. All right? um, this is my Notepad window. I was, I was making another video earlier, and so this has got some junk in it. But if I go uh, delete that, now if I go paste, what happens is that everything ends up on one line. All right? This is a Notepad problem. This is not a, a WoW problem or a GNOME sequence or enhanced problem. It's not something I can do anything about. It's just Windows Notepad doesn't cope with the same line endings that WoW uses. All right? So it puts all of this stuff in on one line. And in the most part, it's OK. But here's where the problems occur. Um, I'll go to the post macro. So I've got post macro, use combat 13, use combat 14. WoW will treat that. So when you turn around and load this back in, WoW will treat that as one line. Um, so instead of it being the two lines here and it being dealt with and cleaned up properly, it treats that as one line and goes, hmm, I got no idea what you're trying to do, and breaks. So it yeah, don't use so don't use Notepad unless you want to cause yourself a lot of grief and a lot of pain. If you want a good text editor, I'm going to be showing the one I'm going to be showing you in a couple of seconds is called Atom. It's available from HTTP Atom.io. So I'll just type that in here. Right, it's available from www.atom.io. It's got a plugin that will code up WoW stuff and Lua stuff so that you can start seeing what you're looking at. And the colors and bits and pieces that are in my text editor have come from plugins to Atom. Um, if you're on Windows, another very good one that a lot of people use and a lot of people spend a lot of time working with is a thing called Eclipse. Um, this is designed for Java stuff. There is Visual Studio, it has a community edition, but Visual Studio and Eclipse are big, massive editors. They're, they're, over, they're probably overkill for most gamers, but if you're in those worlds, you can use those things. Um, but if you if you just want a quick drop-in replacement for Notepad, there's a, a, um, a thing you can Google called Notepad++, and it will turn around and do your stuff. So, um, all right. Ah, it's given me the wrong window altogether, so I'll just get it to turn around and um, change to my WoW folder. So, C, Games, World of Warcraft, Interface Add-ons. There's those folders that are the same ones we had in game. All right, and we're going to go into the GS My Macros one and edit it, and edit it now. So, this has got a TOC file. You don't need to change this. But then underneath the macros, you've got a bunch of Lua files. These are the things we're going to edit. Now, for convenience sake and to make it easier for you to understand what's there, um, there's a Death Knight one, a Demon Hunter one, da 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 And they're more so much for your convenience than they are for any programming reason. So if you wanted to, you could put all of your stuff in the Death Knight one and it will work. There's no rules that says Death Knight stuff has to go into Death Knight stuff and not into the Paladin stuff. That's just me arranging stuff to be convenient. But when we open this up in, in, in Atom, there's a, a right-click option. So if I go back to my add-ons folder, there's a right-click option which doesn't pop up in my streaming tool. But it comes up with, like, on the right-click menu, there's a thing called Open with Atom. And what it does is it turns around and displays this window here. So this is my Atom text editor. Um, I've got some stuff left open that I was coding and debugging and fixing earlier. So on the left here, like GS Core, Drake's Macros, High Performance Macros, My Macros, Sequence Editor. You shouldn't ever have to edit GS Core and Sequence Editor. You can edit Drake's Macros, but do that at your own risk, because again, when I update it, it might overrode, overwrite your changes, um, and you don't want that. So we're going to take, I'm playing a Paladin, so I'm going to open up the Paladin file. This is another one that I needed to delete anyway. But if I go, so I've gone copy in, in thing. If I go paste, oops, that's not the that's not the macro I was playing with. Um, I had this one where I was doing some tests of some dead stuff, but all right. So if we go over here, we go copy of that. Come back to our atom editor. We go paste. So the first thing to do is change live test. We're going to call this ret, ret test. We're going to call it ret test just so that it sticks out. So in this list, all these ones that begin DB and HP, this one ret test should pop up 
should be pretty easy to find. So it's got Drake at Nagrand. This has basically just picked up my character name and my server name. I could change this to Timothy Luke, or I could change it to whatever else. Um, talents, this is another one of those text things. Don't try this at home. All right, and this spec ID. Now, spec ID is a number. Um, each spec has a unique number that's unique to them. So, number 70 means ret paladins, um, and like prot paladins are 65, and holy paladins are 66, and arcane mages are 20 something, and every single spec has its own number. Now, in game, you can figure out what that spec is by going just gs show spec. It may sound obvious, but your current specialization is 70 retribution. The alternate class ID is 2. So what that means back in our editor is that I can turn around and take spec ID equals 70. That means that it'll apply to ret pallies. But if this was one of those one that I wanted to all pallies, I could change the 70 to 2. Um, and then this macro would then apply to all paladins, not just retribution ones. So I'll change that back to 70. Talents, da 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 da. I've got my pre macro. Icon. So an icon basically is the. Um, it's what's the. When I create this macro in game, what icon am I going to put onto the menu interface? So this one, I'm going to take um, the Corrupted Ashbringer icon just so that it looks different. Yep. There's my sections of stuff. There's my post macro. I go file save, All right? And when we go back to the game, the first thing that we'll notice when we do this drop-down list is it's not there. This hasn't been added to the game yet. All right? If I do a dash ds, it's not in this list. It's the spitting out. What I need to do is I need to do a reload of the UI. So I can do that two ways. I can log out, log in again, or I can go console reload UI, press the enter key wait for it to finish doing stuff and I butchered the file I've made a typo mistake so if I go back to the text editor the mistake I made was I missed that line save the good part is I can go back to game there's already a reload button so I don't have to do the console reload UI um, this is just proof that um, there are no experts I all of us can make mistakes doing typos, and half the error messages you'll get have are not because the, the mod's broken, it's because you're playing around with mod level code and it does deep, 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 deep stuff. Anyway, re reloading UI, I'm back. If I do a GS, right, what I've got is here's ret test, right, this is the new one I just created. And if I go across to the Drake specific macros, there's ret test, it's got a different icon it's got the corrupted ashbringer so I can bring it down um, if I go bring up the editor load sequence ret test right there it is at the bottom ret test da -da 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 -da. so this stuff here is identical to what I had here in my macros in my paladin file All right um, I can't bring these up side by side I but take my word for it as I flip between these two. C1, C2, C1, C. They're, they're both the same. Now this talents, don't try this at home. This has come up here so that if I can never really remember what talents I needed to use or anything else I wanted to remember, I can throw it there. I've dragged the icon down to my bar and all I have to do now is go back to my target and click the button. So that's why ret sequencer, um, why gnome sequencer enhance exists. It's why it's there. It's what it's for. It's literally to try and take some of the, it's some of the pain of macros and setting bits up and figuring things out and iterating and trying to work out all that stuff. It's to give you a better option. It's 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 literally to look at problems with this this macro interface and what can we do about it now. Um, the only other thing I can leave you with is if we go back to that folder, right? I've now got this. I've now got that folder of GS my macros. Um, I can edit 
I can take that. I can go. Um, well, I could take that and I could rename it and call it Super Macros. Ah, because it's open in Atom. I'll try that again. No. Nope. Yeah, yeah, Super Macros. I go in. I take this thing. This has to be renamed to to match. It has to be identical to the name of the previous one, uh, which you can't see. Fantastic! I just so love um, bugs with Windows. Windows is just awesome. So I'll try this one. If I double click Super Macros, ah, this time it works. So this talk file used to be my macros. It's now Super Macros to match that. <clears throat> I can take this, go create zip, uh, send to compress zip folder. There's my GS Super Macro zip. I can take that, I can mail that, or I can share it, or I can send it, or I can trade it with um, any of my guildies or whatever else. You know, I've got two computers, I can take that, put it on the other computer, extract it to my add-ons, um, and then I've got that macro in both places, and I can do whatever I like to it. I can share it, I can do some fun stuff. But anyway, that's Gnome Sequencer Enhanced 101. That's what it's there for, that's why it exists, that's how it works, what it does. Um, the other videos that I've uploaded cover some you know, how to use the editor, which we've covered here. It's gone, what's the best place to do this? Um, there's other stuff about if you're translating from an older version of Gnome Sequencer to this, what are some bits and pieces to worry about? Um, it's, it's, it's more talking like this for me. They're a little bit shorter than this because they're aimed at a different audience. But I encourage you to have some fun, play around the game. You can find me on Curse. You can find me on... WoW interface, you can find me on WoW Lazy Macros, I'm here on YouTube. Um, I'm trying to be generally responsive. Um, yeah, on my signatures you'll find where I am in game and all that kind of stuff. So, wish you well, hope this works. If you have any other questions, please feel free to comment. Um, and if you find any bugs, please let me know because I don't know what I don't know. And everything works on my machine, but I need it to work on yours for it to be cool. So anyway, have a great night, have a great day, kill stuff in game, get legendaries, get epics, make gold, do what you do. Night.